Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this coin purse here. It's super easy. Um, it, any beginner can do it as long as you know the basic stitches, such as single crochet, you know, and chain. It should be pretty easy for anybody. Open it up there. Got a cute little coin purse. It's not hard at all. Um, Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That way you never miss out on any of my tutorials. So let's go ahead and get started on this little coin purse. Okay, for this little project you're going to need a coin, coin purse clasp. The one I'm using is about three and a quarter inches. If you open it up, it's like a perfect circle here. and It's like three and a quarter inches across that way. And then three and a quarter inches across this way. And then um, you're going to need a regular thread and needle to sew this on to your coin purse, matching thread and needle. And then I'm using um, a regular Red Heart Super Saver, and it's just a worsted uh, four ply medium weight acrylic. Of course, you don't have to use this brand, any type of four ply yarn will work. Uh, the color I'm using is burgundy. Of course, you can use any color that you want. And I'm also mixing it with Red Heart's new uh, Red Heart's uh, scrubble, Scrubby Sparkle Yarn. I know it's ideal for dishcloths, but I thought I'd just make something different with it. So, I'm going to make a coin purse out of it. So, oh, and then I'm going to be using a size I, which is a 5.5mm uh, crochet hook. Okay, you want to take your two, your regular yarn and then your scrubby yarn. Try to get them, you know, matching color if you want. I guess you don't have to. If you want to make them two different colors, you can. But I try to get mine close to matching. It's not exactly, but close enough. We're just going to work with them together like we would two strands of yarn. So we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. And we're going to work a chain of three. So one, two, three, and then we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch to form a ring. And if you wanted to use the magic circle here, you could do that too. Just like that. Now I'm going to chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as anything. It does not count as a stitch. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and work six single crochets through the center of the ring. Six single crochets. There's one, two, three, four, kind of slide them over if you need to. And six. Now, scrubby yarn is not the easiest yarn to work with. I'm not going to lie about that. But, it does make a pretty, pretty neat uh, project once you're finished. Now, you're going to need some type of stitch marker right here. And I'm just going to use this piece of yarn here. So, what I'm going to do is put it right here. That way, I know where I begin and where I end. So I got, that's round one, and I got my six single crochets. So what I'm going to do is jump to the first single crochet that we did. Not the chain one, but the first single crochet. And put two single crochets in it. I always like to count back, though, because sometimes it gets a little, uh, on this first round, it's hard to tell where the, you're supposed to put your stitch. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to go right here. It kind of looks like you're supposed to go there, but make sure you count back. So go ahead and jump to that first single crochet you made. And put two single crochets into that stitch. And now we're going to work two single crochets for round two in every stitch until we get back to our stitch marker. So go ahead and put two into the next stitch. And two into the next and we're going to work this around until we get to our stitch marker and 
and once you make it back to your stitch marker you should have 12 single crochets now like that now I'm going to pull my stitch marker up and put it right back here where I started and I'm going to go around again this time I'm going to put one single crochet into the first stitch this is round three and then I'm going to put two single crochets into the next stitch and then I'm going to put one single crochet into the next stitch and then two single crochets into the next and that's a repeat this time around for round three one single crochet into the next and then two single crochets into the next one single and two singles we want to do that until we get back to our stitch marker I'm almost there so I'll go ahead and finish this round up and your last stitch before you get to the stitch marker should have two single crochets in it and you should have a total of 18 stitches now at the end of round three so what we're doing is gradually increasing this is the base of our of our pouch so now we're gonna at the end of round three you got your 18 stitches we're gonna move our marker up and we're gonna work around again for round four we're gonna start by putting one single crochet in each of the first two stitches so one single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch, and then the next stitch will get two single crochets. So there's one and two. And then we're just going to repeat that all the way around. One single crochet in each of the next two stitches. One, one and then two single crochets into the next so round four is one single crochet one single crochet two single crochets one single one single two all the way until you get back to your stitch marker okay I've made it back to my stitch marker and your last stitch should have two single crochets in it and at the end of round four you should have uh, 24 stitches now so we're going to pull our stitch marker out move it up again and now for round five we're going to go around again this time we're going to put one single crochet into the first three stitches so there's one and that one one in the next one in the next and then the next stitch will have two single crochets and that's what we're going to repeat for round five one single crochet into the first each of the first next three stitches so one one in the next and one in the next and then two single crochets in the next so we're going to repeat this until we get back to the stitch marker one single crochet one single crochet one single crochet and then two single crochets one one two one one two until you get back to the beginning okay I made it to the end of round five and you should have ended with two single crochets into that last stitch and you should have 30 stitches now and you go ahead and move your stitch marker up now what we're gonna do is set this down is if you have a different size clasp than me you just want to make sure that your bottom ring right now fits inside the clasp So that way you can sew it in there and that's pretty pretty good for my size I think but if you have one that's bigger you can just keep increasing in the same manner that we've been doing for your base until your base fits inside the tucks under that your clasp part like that it might be a little bit big but I think it'll be okay yeah 
so so you can see that's pretty much all the way tucked under that way we'll be able to sew it in at the end so if you got my size uh five rounds is fine so now what we're going to do we moved our stitch marker up now what we're just going to be doing is continual rows of single crochet and what this is going to do is start to build the sides up so you went ahead and you moved your stitch marker up so around six it's just going to be one single crochet in every stitch all the way around until you get back to your stitch marker just like this one single every stitch to make it all the way back around here okay when you make it back at the end of round six you still should have 30 stitch stitches so you want to go ahead and move your stitch marker up and for round seven we're just going to repeat round six so now we're just going to keep repeating round six and your sides will eventually start to go up it may take a few rounds before you notice it but they'll start eventually building all the walls of the coin purse so this is round seven I'm just going to put one single crochet in every stitch and when I get back to the beginning I still should have 30 single crochets I should have 30 single crochets at the end of every round and I'm always going to move my stitch marker up and then go around again to another round of single crochet until we get our coin purse as tall as we want it to be So I'm on round seven right now. Okay, I went ahead and did 15 rounds, and that is starting from the very first round on the base, round one, all the way up to 15 rounds. And I made it back, and you still should have 30 single crochets, and I made it back to my stitch marker. So now all I want to do is go ahead and slip stitch into the next stitch, like that. And then I can move that stitch marker and I'm going to clip this yarn off like that. And then we want to go ahead and hide these tails before we sew on our clasp. So I'm going to go ahead and get my yarn needle and hide these tails real quick. Okay, I got my tails all hidden. Okay, now what we're going to do is get your matching thread and your sewing needle. And I went ahead and threaded it through. And I kind of doubled up my thread and just want to put a knot at the end of it. I always just wrap it around my fingers and roll it and it should not ride up. I'm going to do it again. Get a bigger knot on there. Okay. Now you got a knot at the end. Now you want, you want to do is take your... I'm going to move my camera up just a bit, so I'm sorry. Now what you want to do is take your clasp and we need to sew it to the inside of this clasp through these holes so just kind of set it it's kind of hard I guess to get it at first just kind of cram it in there like that and then get your piece right up in there and then you can start anywhere you want actually it just push through make sure it goes up you could take a yarn needle kind of push it up in there if you want a thicker yarn needle that's kind of what I do make sure it gets up in there good but the thread's going to hold it too. So go ahead and pull, put it through and then put it through one of these holes on the back of your clasp like that. I'm actually going to try to get the first one. There we go. Like that. And then I'm going to go through the next hole on the clasp and make sure you're grabbing your bag too or your coin purse too and pull it pretty tight make sure it goes up in there now I'm going to go again through the next hole on the clasp And then back through the next hole on the clasp. Like 
like that, pull it tight. Go back and go through the next hole on the clasp. Oops, that's a hole I already went through, you can see it. Some people, you can even use embroidery thread if your holes are big enough. Probably even yarn if you wanted to, but I usually use this regular thread. But I will probably go across it twice on both sides. Once you get your first part down, it's easier to do. Here we go. Pull it tight. And then the next hole. I'm trying to make it where you can see it, I guess. I'll try it this way. And then the next hole on the clasp. Make sure you're grabbing your piece two. Pull it through tight. Go back through this piece or through your crochet piece and go through the next hole on the clasp. Pull it tight. Go through the next hole here. And grab your crochet piece. Pull it tight. Try to keep it tucked under if you can. If not, I think pulling it tight is going to hold it good enough. But try to keep it tucked under if you can. Go back through again and through the next hole on your clasp. Oops. Pull it tight through the next hole here. Make sure you grab your piece back here. Pull it tight. So I'm going to do that all the way down this until I get to this side here. And I'll meet you when we get to there. I just want to show you too, as you're working, making sure you're keeping this side inside the ring. That way it don't fall out and then it'll get real loose. You want to try to keep it equal. So to kind of pull that down a bit. That way you have, you know that. If you let it fall through a bunch of this is going to go over and then when you try to sew this up it's not going to be equal but i always just keep it in there like that that way i know it's pretty much going to be sewed equal all the way around okay i've made it to the end of one side of my class so you can see it's probably a lot easier to start to sew now i'm going to go across it again you don't necessarily have to do this but i'm going to so i have a hole here on the end so i'm going to go right through that And now I'm just going to go to the next hole that I already went through before. And then back up the next hole. This makes, this is a cincher and then through the next hole that, um, it's not going to come off. And you can see when we went across it once it was leaving a little gap in between each hole now it's filling in every hole because we're going covering that gap up now with this second row i hope you can see it okay i'm trying to hold it up it's hard to see oh i'm putting my needle though go through this one oops i'm not really good with the needle and thread truthfully I'm not going to lie. And then the next one. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at it. Not like I... I'm a little better with the crochet hook. Back through. So I'm just going back down it again. Doing the same thing we did. In and out. Going through the next hole. And then the next one. I'm going to do this until we get to the end and I will, what I'll do is tie this thread off and start on the other side and get it all sewed up on there. It's hard to show you because it's so little. I hope I'm getting good angles but 
but you can see now it's covering every hole of the clasp by doing two rows. When we only did one row, there was a gap in between them. You can see the gaps. So this makes it look nicer, plus it holds it tighter so you don't have to worry about it coming undone on you. That wouldn't be cool. Walking around, all your chains falls out. So I'm going to continue doing this one more time across like I'm doing until I get to back, back around to where I started. I really don't like working with the sewing needle. Usually I always poke myself a hundred times. But hey, I'm getting there. Slowly. So I think it's going to work out for me. Hopefully. Okay, I'm going to continue this until I get over here to this side. Okay, when you make it to the end of this side, all you want to do is kind of knot off your uh, thread, sew it in, knot it off, and then just start a new thread on the other side and do the same thing over here that we just did over here. So what I just kind of tie it off a few times. Sorry, my dog was in there barking. I know you can probably hear him. Just tie it off and then I kind of just hide it, weave it in like I do a regular yarn tail. I don't know if that's right, but that's kind of how I do it. Just so it don't come undone. And then get you some new thread another set of thread on your needle and start over here again on this side from this one go across once and then go across again so this side on okay once you get done sewing both sides uh, you can see the corners of the clasp are not sewn there on either side because there was no holes to sew them so those stay open you only sew where there was holes and you can see where I went across twice on both sides and that's what you want to do get it held nice and good and then you can close her up and you got a little coin purse super cute I think it turned out nice with that scrubby yarn it's pretty neat put whatever you want in there so that's it I hope you enjoyed my tutorial if you make this or anything else I'd really love to see a picture of it you can post a picture on my Bag of Day Crochet Facebook page. I'll put a link to that below in the description box. And until next time, have a good day.